from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. So if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 62. We've seen butterflies and sea turtles at stages of their life cycle, and today we'll observe reproduction of other types of animals. But first I'll show you a source of cute baby animal pictures and information. This is baby animals from zoo books. And for many animals, part of reproduction is caring for the young. And this publication features baby animals along with the adults that protect and raise them. Most public libraries have zoo books. I'll have more information on my website, letscreate.org. And today, let's look at a group of animals that have been around almost as long as the ocean, fish. Fish come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They have some traits in common that qualify them for this fishy classification. So what traits does this animal have that qualifies it to be classified as a fish? These fish have the same traits in common. Let's start with the basics. Fish are vertebrates. That means they have backbones. Now if you eat fish, you may have had to be careful that some of those bones don't stick in your mouth or throat. These fish are swimming in a coral reef, finding food to eat there. Coral reefs are like an all-you-can-eat buffet for many species of fish. Does their classification have anything to do with color? These are certainly colorful fish, but notice the coral they're swimming through. They are also colorful, but coral, as we learned earlier, are not vertebrates. They have no backbones, so they can't qualify as fish. So while fish can be colorful, it's not their color that makes them a fish. Other groups of animals are colorful as well. Size doesn't seem to matter either. Here we see fish of various sizes. They're all fish, even at different sizes. Here are some colorful fish scouring the ocean floor for a meal. They have backbones like all fish. Now, fish are also cold-blooded. Their bodies don't produce and maintain their own body heat. Cold-blooded animals get their body heat from the environment around them. Different species have different body temperatures, but they're all said to be cold-blooded. Fish are sometimes found in very large groups. These groups are called schools. This school is swarming. If we look at the fish we've seen so far, we see some things about their appearance that they have in common. We've seen fish that are fairly oval in shape of their body. They have these fins sticking out that they use to guide their swimming. They have vertical tails that they move from side to side. All these appearances convince us that we're looking at a fish. It's a good bet that these fish all have backbones and they're cold-blooded. What about this creature swimming among the fish? It doesn't look like the others. It's flat instead of oval, no pointy fins, and that tail doesn't look at all like the others. Would you be surprised to hear that this creature is a fish? What about this creature? It's called a seahorse. There's no oval shape, no fins, no vertical tail moving from side to side. Surely this is something else. Well, guess what? You've been looking at a fish. There's another trait that an animal must have to qualify as a fish. While fish must have backbones and be cold-blooded, they also must have gills. 
Now these are organs that allow them to get oxygen from the water. In other words, fish never have to go up to the surface to breathe. They don't have lungs like other vertebrates. Gills are feathery in appearance, but they're not visible on the exterior. Fish wear their gills on the inside, usually under slits in the side behind their heads. Some fish have scary looking teeth, like this one. Fish begin their life cycles as eggs. They hatch from eggs, at which point they're called fry. Now, fry are immature, which is to say they're not capable of reproducing. It doesn't mean they can't eat, though. Unlike mammals that give milk to their young, fish mothers can only teach their young to get their own food or leave them to figure it out for themselves. It depends on the species. Fish are capable of cooperative behavior like these sardines swirling around to confuse a predator, a shark. Speaking of sharks, although they are classified as fish, sharks break some of the classification rules. First of all, the internal skeleton of a shark is made of cartilage instead of bone. This makes them more flexible swimmers. Some sharks hold their eggs inside their body until they hatch thus providing a kind of live birth. So while laying eggs and having backbones remain traits that all fish have in common, some sharks are a little different. While sharks are notorious predators, some species are quite picky about what they'll eat. Most sharks are not easily intimidated, but most species have no desire to attack people. Here's another surprise. Some sharks or at least somewhat warm-blooded. I guess if you're a shark, you don't have to follow all these fishy rules.